Okay everyone, we're out for another night here in Singapore and thanks to some very helpful herping friends here we found my lifer gold ring cat snake aka mangrove cat snake aka boiga melanota now I have been to a million places where these are supposed to exist and never found one so this was my white whale and uh, one of our buddies here tonight spotted not just this but another one right next to it as well so these are a uh, uh, largely arboreal species. They like to live around and hang out over water. Um, they're actually quite large for a boiga species. Uh, you can see here it's pretty thick bodied. I'll give you my hand as a reference. So this is actually a good sized snake and you can see here this one is also in shed and it's just about to completely shed out I think. So it's a really really amazing species. One that I've had on my lifer list for quite a long time really happy and excited to be able to share this with everyone. So we're gonna maybe watch it for a bit, see if it sheds out, and try and get a few more photos. And uh, then we'll uh, check back in if there's anything else to show you. Okay, so the mangrove has shed out and it's made its way up a tree where we're probably gonna let it hang. But as you can see here, it's a very, very impressive snake. Everything you'd expect and hope for in a mangrove snake. Beautiful gold and dark black contrast. And pretty calm, actually. Uh, really hasn't struck or anything. Just kind of hanging out. Flicking the tongue to try and see what's going on. But a really, really cool snake and it's in a really cool position on this tree. See if I can show you guys a little bit more detailed view. You can see the tail and the body come all the way around this end and it's actually a uh, pretty big snake. Really really fantastic species. Really cool to have on the vlog. And definitely one of my top ever lifers. Alright, we'll sign off here and we'll check back in if there's anything else worth note. Okay everyone, we're out for another walk in a different location and we have come across one of my favorite more common species to be found here in Singapore, the sunbeam snake. So these snakes are a fossorial slash subfossorial species that actually have more genetically in common with ground pythons than they do with um, you know, wolf snakes or reed snakes or any of the more common fossorials you'd find out here. And they get their common name, as you might be able to tell, from the very brilliant iridescent shine on their scales. Now this is going to be much more obvious in the daytime than it is at night with this nice soft video light but still you can kind of get the idea the whole body has an iridescent sheen um, all the way down uh, these are uh, relatively common in certain areas I, I think people the average hiker and nature enthusiast might not bump into them as much um, because they are subfossorial and you know normally come out at night and here we go but um, pretty interesting species uh, I think we'll probably just let it get on its way here and see if we can find something else, but great to be able to bring it to you guys on the vlog. Okay, we got our next snake of the night and it's another sunbeam. This one was literally crossing the path and tucked up real quick when I came over with the light. but. Similar to the last one, size and everything else, you can actually see the iridescence a little bit better on this one. Really nice looking snake. Really pristine, doesn't look like it's taken much damage in its life. But yeah, these guys seem to be really out and about around here and on the hunt. Um, I'm on kind of a uh, manicured path and a lot of vegetation on both sides, so uh, seems these guys like to hunt around the edges anyways, or maybe I'm just getting lucky with them crossing, so. 
Anyhow, population seemed good. Very cool common snake. And we're going to keep on walking and see if we can come up with something else. All right, we're out for another walk with some new herping buddies here in Singapore. And as luck would have it, I've got my third Boiga Melanota in as many nights. Actually, one of the guys we're with here spotted it just as we started our walk. And as you can see here, it's a much smaller one than the one we found the other night. Here's my hand for reference. So I would say this is a juvenile, but starting to edge into sub-adult. Uh, the coloration is a little bit more mature coloration. As juveniles, they tend to have orange coloration. But yeah, this is a mature coloration for the most part. So very, very cool find to start the night. We've got a lot more walking around to do. So hopefully we'll have some more luck. But yeah, great start. We'll check in again if we find something else. All right, we've got our next snake of the night. We actually walked by a Malaysian whip snake that was too high up in a tree to get. But thankfully, one of the uh, boys in our crew spotted this elegant bronzeback. This is uh, definitely one of the prettier species of bronzeback and really quite spectacular in terms of color. This one's super long. It's actually, um, we were just having a quick chat about it, probably pushing 1.2 meters. Uh, a little bit tricky to tell here, but I'll see if I can give a reference without spooking it. There's my hand. Tough to see when it's coiled up, but really, really long bronze back. And you can see here, they actually have some quite nice coloration. Not the creamy ventrals and lateral coloration you see on Pictus, um, but more of a, a greenish yellow. And then they have these really accentuated big eyes and a shorter nose as compared to Pictus. So really, really cool species. My lifer, really excited that uh, the boys spotted it and uh, super excited tonight. We're having a great night so far. So see if we can get something else to show you guys before we're done. Okay, everyone, we're out for our next walk. And just at the start here, I found this very cool Malaysian box turtle. Now this is a fully mature individual. And it looks like it's just a shell, but you can see in there, he's actually just closed up in very typical box turtle fashion. So these are pretty stubborn animals. I doubt that this one's gonna come out if I'm anywhere near it, it's probably just going to stay boxed up like this. But I'll give you a quick view of the shell. And a quick size reference. Let me see here. There's my hand. So this would be a fully grown, mature individual. And it's, I would say, likely a male, but I have to check the um, plastron to know for sure. And yeah, very cool. Always great to find turtles when we're out on the walks, especially finding this species in its native range. Uh, we actually have these in Hong Kong as well, but they are not native there. They are introduced through the pet trade. So good start. Uh, I'm gonna watch this for a few more minutes. If it starts walking around and getting bold, I'll try and do another filming so that you can see the face. But um, yeah, good start. We're gonna keep going, see if we can come up with some more stuff. All right, so the only snakes we found tonight are a whip snake that was up in the trees. So we didn't really stop to spend too much time filming that, it was a bit far off. But we did luck out with another turtle, and I'm pretty sure this is another black marsh terrapin. So we actually found a black marsh terrapin early in the trip to Singapore here. But uh, this is the first one we're getting some decent video of. And as you can see here, it's a relatively nondescript turtle. Uh, just pretty much dark all over. There are some cream colored markings on the back of the head. A little bit of the tip of the nose that may be some variability within species. The last one I saw looked almost melanistic. But pretty cool species. Um, obviously not something we get in Hong Kong so nice to be able to encounter one in the wild in its home territory here in Singapore. Well, we're going to keep at it. A lot more to do tonight, but uh, another good one to stop for. Check back in if we get anything else. 
All right, we are out for another walk, and we've come upon another lifer for me. And this is the pink-headed reed snake. This is a relatively common fossorial snake here. Um, uh, not one that I've seen before. And it's a really cool Batesian mimic of the blue coral snake here, which is a species of a lapid that has blue body coloration and red head and red tail. Um, but these guys are just little ones. You can see there just a tiny little snake but with this beautiful coloration on the head so this one's on the move across a road a little bit difficult to film him without being too shaky but I think you can kind of get the idea really cool snake I'm very happy to be able to bring it to the vlog and we're gonna follow him around a minute if he um, gets under a leaf and chills out a little bit or stays put for a second, I'll pop back on and get some more footage. Alright, so we've got the pink-headed reed snake up under some leaves here and it's taking a break from moving around. I thought we'd give you a closer look. It's a very, very tiny snake as we mentioned, so it's a little bit difficult to get in sharp here without a, a full macro lens but you can see it's got a very very brightly colored pinkish peachish colored head clearly delineated at the neck very typical reed snake body dimensions very smooth um, a little bit like a torpedo at the head with a blunt tail with a spur at the end and this one is clearly delineated between the the dorsal and lateral uh, coloration you've got that iridescent gray on top and there's kind of a uh, clear delineation to white at the side there but very very interesting species and as I mentioned uh, it's pretty clear that this is trying to be a mimic of the blue coral snake which has very bright red colored head um, but this is ironically probably also something that that snake likes to eat a lot Very cool species really great lifer and Great snake to be able to bring to the vlog All right, everyone we've got a cool closer for the evening this is The giant Asian pond turtle we managed to luck up on it uh, close to the side of a water body munching on some vegetables. So I'm actually going to focus on getting some still shots and um, I won't take too long on the video but really really cool species, really quite big. It's, it's at least a 12 inch carapace, maybe even more. Um, and a very cool species, not one that uh, we've ever seen on the vlog before and not one that actually frankly speaking gets a lot of video time uh, on YouTube. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy. I'll get some great stills and maybe I'll add some into the video here after I've had a chance to edit them up. Okay, we're out on another walk. And we've been very lucky this evening to come across this many-banded crate, Bungaris fasciatus. Now, this is a species that we find in Hong Kong a little bit more regularly. But in Singapore, it's got a pretty restricted distribution. And it's a relatively uncommon encounter. Um, really interesting animals. Uh, for those of you that have seen the vlog before, you'll know the basics. But I'll go over it again for any newbies. Um, these are... One of the larger species of crate in the world, they can get upwards of two meters, sometimes more. They have a very interesting characteristic triangular shaped body, um, a very heavily keeled body uh, that you can kind of see here when you look to the edge of some of the coils. Uh, like the many banded crates and the banded crates from other areas, they also have enlarged dorsal scales or vertebral scales, which is a key identifier for them, although this species is relatively unique. 
uh, in its morphology, pretty hard to confuse with others. They also have a very interesting characteristic here that you can see, which is their tail. Now, you might have thought that that was actually the head tucked in there, and that would be the point because their tail actually acts like a decoy for their head. Um, the head itself, you can see, is over on this side. And it's not unusual, actually, for these snakes to tuck their head under the body and expose only the tail. And I think the logic there is that a, a attacker would arguably go for the tail and then give the chance for the snake to turn around and bite the attacker and maybe make a getaway. So, really great find. Very excited about this. Not my first banded crate, but definitely my first in Singapore. And, uh, oh, one more thing worth note is the coloration. Uh, in Hong Kong and other parts of Asia, the light color bands are usually a, a bright yellow or in some cases um, a darker yellow with some black markings on them. But here in Singapore, they're very characteristically cream colored. And that seems to be pretty consistent across individuals. Um, so yeah, very interesting uh, external morphology associated with locality when it comes to this species. So we're going to keep at it. See if we can come up with anything else tonight, in which case we'll check back in. Otherwise, you'll catch us on the next walk.